Russia has just invaded the Ukraine. We're on the brink of World War III. Maybe you need a nuclear bunker. Hey guys, I'm Video Bob, and I've shown this little nuclear bunker of mine in previous videos. Now, back when I bought my house about a year ago here in Las Vegas, the people that built this house back in the 70s, they were worried about the threat of potential nuclear war. And here in Las Vegas, or in Nevada rather, they used to do a lot of nuclear testing. As a matter of fact, they used to sell tickets to go watch the bombs go off. It's pretty crazy. Now, as a Gen Xer born in the 70s, we grew up in the 80s under the threat of nuclear war. We had Ronald Reagan talking about it all the time. We had, we had all these movies we used to watch about the threat of potentially nuclear war and invasion, like war games and nuclear warheads and all these different things that may potentially happen. Now, I don't want to get into any of the political implications of any of this. Uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today. But I do want to say that if you'd like to learn more about Russian and Ukraine and, and, and Belarusian kind of culture, I'd like you to go out and watch one of my favorite YouTubers, Bald and Bankrupt. Bald and Bankrupt likes to tour these places, and what I've learned is that the people over there aren't much different than the people over here. So my heart goes out to the Russian people and the Ukrainian people, because those Russian people, they don't want a war with Ukraine. They have, they have nothing to do with what their government is doing. So please don't take out any of your frustrations on any of the Russian people. I am positive that their hearts are absolutely broken and devastated and they are going to suffer. They're going to have to suffer from all the sanctions and injunctions that the rest of the world is going to do to Russia. And it's just going to make their hard lives even harder. And they're good people and they don't deserve what's happening to them. And neither does Ukraine or any of those countries over there. Those are all really good people. You know, one of my guitar player, my band, and my good friend Zoran is from Serbia, and he grew up with bombs going off in his neighborhood, you know, before he migrated to America. And I've heard terrible, terrible stories. And we were afraid of that here in the United States as well. So the people that built this house put in a secret nuclear bunker, you know, doomsday bunker, and I'm going to show it to you. Now, where I am is in a separate garage building outside of my house, and I am down in what is an oil change pit, and above me is a car parked above me, and this is an area where you would work on cars. And there is this metal plate here, and what is it doing here? Well, it's actually a secret door that we found from missing around and it opens up and inside is a big steel tank. All right, as I open the door here, move the camera, you can see inside there's a dinette table, some bunk beds, some other things. There's a light in there. And uh, let's crawl inside and have a look. Okay, I'll put this blanket here on top of this ridge because I don't want to put my knee on it. <sighs> this is not, <laughs> it's not easy being cheesy. It is not easy to get in here when you're, you know, flat, fat and old and not flexible. Okay, oh, there could have been a better way to do that. I'm sure that was the least graceful possible way. Ugh. Dust. Now what we have inside here is obviously a big steel tank that was buried in here. I showed this in some of my other previous, here's some stuff about uh, how to install a phone. That's interesting. There are phone lines in here. There's an old payday from the 80s. Um, this is where they had some bunk beds, obviously. They took the beds out. I don't know why there's a fog machine in here. You might have been using it for some kind of testing, but there are black lights in here. Bunch of water storage. These old Shasta bottles. I showed this in my previous video. You know, this is how they used to do it back in the 80s. You know, they'd, they'd have a plastic rim on the bottom so that it wouldn't fall over, and then a metal cap. They don't do it that way anymore. I th I'm not sure if this is an air inlet or what this is for. You know, the, he obviously had something mounted here. 
with this. I'm not sure what this was about. Looks like these lift up or something. Oh, more water storage under there. Let's see what's over here. More water. Interesting. So yeah, I mean, this guy just kind of put this thing together. You know, it's a big steel tank that is buried underground, under concrete, uh, fairly deep. I guess this is probably an air inlet or something. I don't know, maybe had a fan hooked up to it. But the idea was you could pull yourself down into this cavern and it would probably protect you from, you know, a pretty serious blast. Now, being that I moved here from Texas, a lot of people have tornado shelters and this would be an excellent tornado or storm shelter. Wouldn't be good for flooding. But um, how well it would actually protect you, I don't know. But I would rather be in here in this steel tube surrounded by concrete and brick uh, inside a big metal building rather than just in my house watching TV as the world burns. But we grew up, you know, as Gen Xers in the 80s. And a lot of other people who grew up in the 60s uh, and even into the 70s, living under the threat of nuclear war or some other kind of invasion. And luckily, the shores of America have never been beached by another invader. The closest that that ever happened was in World War II when we joined the war after Pearl Harbor and Hawaii was attacked by Japan. But we've been very fortunate that no one's ever come onto our shores. And again, I'm not trying to take a political stance here, but this is why, uh, you know, people believe in the Second Amendment and why they believe in keeping and burying arms and things like that, simply because... Imagine if you lived in Ukraine and up until a couple days ago, uh, everything was fine and you were at the mall and you were going to McDonald's and you were watching TV and everything. you're living your life just like we do over here in America. And now all of a sudden there is a missile in your living room. And there are Russians driving tanks up and down the street trying to kill you. And you've now been told that if you are of fighting age, you're not allowed to leave because you're going to be drafted and be put into the war to support protecting your country. Again, I know the comments are going to be on fire with all the people talking about the previous president, the current president, all of these other things, and none of that has anything to do with me or us. I'm just here to talk about this little building. And the thing is, is uh, it would be my suggestion, okay? I'm not really a prepper. I'm not one of these QAnon guys. I'm not one of these people that believes in conspiracy. But if I was building a new house and I had the ability to put in something like this, why wouldn't you? You just don't know what's going to happen in the world. Now, think about the fact that this family lived here for 40-something years or whatever, and they never once it probably they never once had to use this thing, and, and I probably hopefully never will either. But isn't it nice to know it's here, just in case? Anyway, I just wanted to show you a little glimpse of what uh, people who lived in places like Las Vegas, you know, you got to think, you know, right down the street from me at McCarran, which is now Harry Reid Airport, is uh, where the planes go back and forth between here and Area 51. And, uh, you know, so Las Vegas may or may not be a target and we definitely know that outside of Las Vegas and Nevada are definitely targets. So maybe that's why they decided, hey, we should have a protection for ourselves here. Anyway, I'm going to get out of this thing. It's stinky and dusty in here. There is like no nice way of doing this because <laughs> it's, it's curved and there's like a bench. Stop looking at my ass. You're looking at my ass. Stop looking. Okay. It's a good thing I'm not in a hurry and I'm wearing leather pants. I can't get, the, there's a ridge is the problem. There's like this vicious lip on top. Uh, uh, see this thing here? Like this, this is like a giant razor blade. It's unbelievable. Okay. Get out of here. <sighs> so 
So a little treat for you guys who've never seen my channel before. This is the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. It's a replica that I built at my shop. This is what we do for a living. And that's what I keep parked in front of my doomsday bunker. And the interesting trivia thing about Back to the Future, the original ending that was written was not that they got their 1.21 gigawatts from a bolt of lightning, but from a nuclear test site where they drove the DeLorean out to Nevada and into one of the nuclear testing things into a nuclear bomb and that gave them the nuclear power they needed for the plutonium chamber to light up and send them back through time. But it was going to be too costly and it was going to be too big a project. So they scrapped it and they came up with the lightning bolt. Those of you that are viewers of my channel are going to ask, have we opened the safe yet? No, we haven't opened the safe yet. We found the safe down there in the pit and it's so big and thick. We just haven't been able to open it and I don't want to destroy it. So I'm working on that. It's something that we're going to do in the near future. I promise. Stay tuned, subscribe, and keep an eye out for when I post the video about opening the safe. Anyway, this is my cool warehouse here in Las Vegas. This is my DeLorean time machine and that's my doomsday bunker. So if uh, we go into full blown nuclear war, I'll be in there drinking a Shasta from 1986. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Video Bob. Mm-hmm.